When scrolling through the Michael Jordan archives, you may have come across this clip. Welcome to the story behind the day that Michael Jordan humiliated Corey Benjamin at the Bulls practice. This is a well-known video that's gone around, it's been shared many, many times, but this is the story behind what happened on this day. So I don't want to keep you waiting, but if you're enjoying the 23 Jordan videos in 23 days, all that I'll ask is that if you do, please hit that like button, subscribe if you are new, if you want to stay tuned for more, and be sure to check out the playlist that has all the Michael Jordan videos that we're doing so far. Also a special mention to these guys, this is where I get the footage from, and go check out the original content by them. Without further ado, welcome to the story behind the day that MJ humiliated Corey Benjamin. You know, I want to get into the MJ one-on-one thing. So MJ had not retired yet, or he announced it after the draft, or how did that work? Mm -hmm. Everybody on that squad knew MJ wasn't coming back. Mm -hmm. but I didn't know. I was like, ooh, man, I get to play with MJ, Dennis yep. Rodman, you know what I'm saying? I yeah. I yeah. To play with MJ. And, um, As Michael Jordan, wife Juanita at his side, says goodbye. I am here to, to announce my retirement from the game of basketball. I chose to walk away knowing that you know, I can still play the game. And that's exactly the way I wanted to end it. How hard was it getting drafted to the Bulls and being a part of the team that like was like the rebuilding process when Jordan's statues outside? And that almost, was tough. And I remember that kind of being just like the first era of like, it was like you, Elton Brand, it was um, Corey Benjamin was ready. Corey yet. Benjamin, yep. Kid named Corey Benjamin from Oregon State. And um, he, yeah. he didn't come back though. I, I was I was very disappointed. I was very disappointed, but you know, I got to spend time with MJ. Hang out with MJ, you know, on the weekends. Play one-on-one -on -one with him. I have to bring up that story. Too. I have to tell those that I read that and that was hilarious. So before we continue, Side note, side story. You you were a confident young fella. Here's Corey Benjamin getting a little sleep. Usually he's up and uh, and, and grabbing drinks for Harp and Randy Brown and they're ordering the rookie around, but they're letting him get a little rest. And you were like, I'm gonna beat Michael Jordan one on one, right? Is that how it went down? And yeah, why wouldn't you think that? Exactly. Like um... I love it. I love the confidence. Here he comes, the goat walks in and you guys play. Tell me how that went down. Ryan Harper and Randy Brown, those are his boys. I got to hang out with MJ. You know, I was like, I'm 19 years old and I'm hanging out with MJ. Like, what? Like, what? What does a 19 year old do with MJ in Chicago, bro? Just sit there and look at him. <laughs> <laughs> I used to call my brother, my friends. He's like, I'm actually at dinner with MJ. You know wow. what I'm saying? Like, and you know, they call him Black Cat. You know what I'm saying? I'm actually sitting down with Black Cat. Like, I'm in the gym. I'm on the bus with MJ. Like, he's. Come and talk to me. Like, dang. What type of stuff would you and Mike talk about, bro? I was that young boy that always nagged him. You know, like, I'll drive over there and, like, ring his doorbell, play ding dong ditch. I was only 19 years old. Like, play ding dong ditch and, like, the security guy, I'd be like, leave, like, you know, get out of here, you know. But I just wanted to bother him because I wanted him to come be my friend, you know? Yeah, so, right. Who wouldn't? So all of, you know, a lot of his ex teammates were still, you know, in contact with him to go hang out with them. And um, I would always take the phone and just like talk stuff to him. <laughs> and um, so I was always talking stuff to Mike. You know what I'm saying? It's like I tell Mike I can get you. <laughs> it was crazy because you know I, I was I was taking on any challenges with anybody back then. You know I wasn't turning nothing down with my cop. Yeah. You know, and um, it all started with um, a phone call. I just remember one day, Ron Harper was on the telephone or something like that. He talking to Michael Jordan like every single day on the phone. So I grabbed the phone, talked to him, and he was talking or whatever. You know, a little confident 19, 20-year-old kid, you believe you can't be beat. Sure. <laughs> Especially he was an old man, you know. He, he asked me a question, and I said something about, he asked me a question about, do I think I can get him? I said, absolutely, yes. You know, like, <laughs> I, I, absolutely, yes. So um, this conversation went on for about two weeks, and I, I stuck to my guns. And you know, I say a little bit too much. What and you say? Dude, what you say? What you say? I, I can get you. I can get you. Like, and he said, what? I said, yeah, I want that. He said, I, 
I see you. I said, okay. I'm like, yeah, right. MJ ain't gonna come get none of this. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We planted, I think, DC. And um, we were like in DC and... And MJ was living in DC. He told me, I'm gonna come to the game and talk to you. The camera has showed up putting out this car. And he wasn't there to watch the game. Man, they showed this dude on the camera walking in. <laughs> he had his own game. He had his own game that day. He had his own game plan was to come talk to me while I was getting taped for a game. I'm getting taped. He ain't coming there to talk to nobody. <laughs> nobody. He coming to see me on the table. He walked in and said, what you say? I said, I can get that. Oh talk to me for about 15 minutes and said, I'll see you tomorrow in Chicago. He said, all right, I'll be at your practice Monday morning. I'm like, yeah, right, man. I'm like, yeah, right. Who's going to fly just to go play me? And he flew into Chicago. That is hilarious. We flew back to Chicago. We broke practice. Bulls on three, bulls. And one day in November, early in the year, at the end of practice, guess who walks in the door unannounced? Guess who walked in the door? <laughs> <laughs> I walked in the door, Chris. Ooh, ooh. I then took a dump on myself. Oh, like, I tell you. Yeah, 23 walked in in this sweat clothes. Oh, man. Oh. And so I act like I didn't see him, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was yeah. like, I, he said, Coy, come back here. So Jordan took off his top, but he kept his bottoms on, his sweatpants on. Let's go. Everybody like, ooh, I'm like, oh Lord, let me get some of this, you know, let me get some so. And it felt like at that particular time, I was a kid in the candy store. Oh, I'm sure. I was a kid in the candy store. Pretty cool, that's a pretty cool story. Michael Jordan destroyed poor Corey Benjamin. Even then, Jordan was tough to defend. I mean, the thing about Jordan was, you knew what he was gonna do, you knew what he was gonna do. And he gonna, he gonna get you or he gonna pull up. He gonna go left, pull up. Go fade right. And you knew it was coming. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's crazy. He just scored and scored and scored on him in, in every way, shape, and form imaginable. In the beginning, Chris, I mean, like, uh, oh, like a, a, in a in a dream, like actually I'm playing against my idol. Yeah. You know I'm saying so. You know, the first seven buckets, I'm looking like this. Yeah. He did. I want to be like Mike on me. You know, what I'm saying I'm looking like he really do this in real life. Yeah. <laughs> oh! Oh! <laughs> oh! 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 <laughs> Look 
And poor Corey Benjamin was so psychologically shot by what Jordan did to him that Corey Benjamin never amounted to anything. He hung on for about three years with the Bulls, then he bounced around the league a little bit, then he bounced around overseas a little bit, and he was out of sight, out of mind. And Jordan came over and told us in the media afterward that was a lesson. Were you trying to give him a morale boost today? Is that one of the reasons why you That as well as a lesson. It wasn't just a lesson for Corey Benjamin. It was a lesson for Jerry Krause. Jerry and, and everybody you feel. I don't come around Jerry. I don't have to come around Jerry. I mean, you know, I could come around and see some of the players. I mean, I don't have to report to him. You took that guy and you thought he could replace me? Well, I just did that to him. I'm, I'm getting goosebumps just telling you the story. I always wanted to know if you were really playing that hard or was it because it was after practice and you were a little winded? It just sometimes when you were like ch challenging the jumper, it kind of looked like you were just, you weren't really trying to block it. I know you, CB, you got a long ass wingspan. You're quick. I mean, you're, you're one of the hardest dudes to get a jumper off. Were you taking it easy defensively on Mike? I want to know that. Chris. I was in. The, I, I was living my dream. You know, what I'm saying <laughs> to be honest, I, I was living my dream. I, I want, and then when I know he had got up on me like seven zero, Mike got up like seven zero on me real fast. Like, what, 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 what? And I was like, Ooh. so then you know, my friends like, come on, Corey. Like, I'm like, oh. So then I had to start playing, but you know, that, that's a, that's a kid's dream to play against their idol. Man, what a, what an experience, and that's sort of like it's a, it's weird that that's like what everybody remembers and sort of like talks about it, and, and they put it. How do you feel when you re get brought up? in these type of discussions when you these moments go viral and everybody's kind of like, yo, Mike's spanking this rookie, blah, blah, blah. How does that feel, Corey, when you see that? Hey, you know what? I just always say, I got to touch my idol. You know, um, you know, some people are like, oh, Mike dogged you, he dog walked you. But how many people can actually say they play Jordan with the man one-on-one? -on -one? <laughs> Please. Know, like, at the Bulls practice facility. At the Bulls practice facility and with all the six, six championship rings around you, you know, you get, you get to play your man. I got to talk stuff to my idol, you know, and, and, and build a friendship and build a friendship with my idol. Um, See, people don't understand. Mike likes that. So when I got a chance to play with him in 1996 at the Jordan Dome when he was out here filming, Mike would always be talking crap about me, about how fat I used to be and, and how, you know, if I, you better watch out, boy, you better work. You're going you to blow up again. You know, he would say all these things, man, but it was all you can go back at Mike. Mike, you can be physical with Mike. You can elbow Mike in practice, and you can like be tough with Mike. And Mike was not tripping; he welcomed it. I think that's one of the the things that fans don't really understand. They're like, "Oh my God, how do you guys think you can be on the court with Michael Jordan?" It's like you guys don't really know what time it is, man. It's like Michael likes competition, just like everybody else. He's an athlete; he puts his shoes on one foot at a time, just like everyone else. But I never couldn't tell him, like, you're my idol. But he already knew. Like, it's he no had to play it cool, but it's like, I'm <laughs> like, oh, gee, who wouldn't be? I mean, that's that's awesome. That's a that's a really good story. I'm wearing his shoes from this day. I love the Jordan. <laughs> I'm playing a, a guy that got his own clothes on. Uh huh. I already know, bro. I'm just saying. <laughs> I already know, dog. I just can't have a good time. You talk a little trash in Atlanta, I had to come in. Please don't take it no further than that. Come in the area. I'm not stopping by. You know, but it doesn't mean anything. You know, I play pickup games sometimes in, in the neighborhood, you know, south side, west side. No one takes anything from that. I mean, I, I never said I was going to stop playing. How do you feel out there? How much of your game you still have left? <laughs> None. <laughs> Half court and I'm wore out. <laughs> There's the good thing about it, he's wore out more than I am. I had my great reign in basketball. No matter what you guys say, if I come and hang around the game, because I still love the game, that doesn't mean I'm coming back.